Good morning, class, and welcome back to Viking Guitar University. As always, I'm your instructor, Dr. Viking Guitar, Professor Viking Guitar, Mr. Viking Guitar, or Eric, whichever you prefer. Uh, today we're going to talk about a very cool function in Reaper um, called envelopes. This is also referred to as automation, and this is something that exists in most, if not all, DAWs, but uh, as, as usual, we're using Reaper to show you what it is. The process might be a little different for different ones, but you'll get the gist of what they do. So, um, We've got Reaper open up here, and this is some stupid little guitar line that I recorded just a little bit ago. It sounds kind of like this. And it repeats the second time, just so we have enough to work with. Okay, so you might be saying to yourself, that's a really stupid guitar line, and you're probably correct. It doesn't do anything too interesting. Um, but it, it will serve its purpose. It's here to uh, be our guinea pig for automation. So you might be asking yourself, what is automation? Well, as we've already done in a few lessons, we've um, adjusted uh, the panning on things to kind of control if it's more to the left of the mix or the right of the stereo mix. Um, we've adjusted volume and stuff. We've looked at different effects, and a lot of those things have controls as well. And uh, up to this point, all we've done is we've set a control, and then we've played it, and that's how it is. That control stays in the same place for the whole song unless we decide to change it, and then it stays in that place for the whole song. What automation does, and uh, envelopes are the way to use automation is it allows for dynamic processing of these things so you can have them change in real time as the song is um, playing. A good example of this would be, let's say we want the first half of this stupid little riff here to play um, with the panning all the way to the left, and then for the second half we want it to jump over and play all the way to the right. Now obviously if we highlight it and move this thing it's not going to do anything because it stays the same all over. So. Automation is the way to do that. And we're going to double click our panning to bring it back to center right here. So the first thing we're going to use to uh, look at this is volume. Um, we're going to start by, uh, first off, we should name our track here. We're going to name this crummy guitar line because that is an accurate description of what it is. And we're going to click this little button here that says trim. And if you hover over it, it shows track envelopes automation. And then it says automation mode is trim read. Now, the trim read thing is something we're going to get into in a moment. But let's open this guy up. And uh, right off, you're going to see that there's a few different things here. Um, we've got buttons for show all active and hide all active, arm all visible, and disarm all. These are important because uh, as we start doing this, we might have envelopes going for a whole bunch of different things. We might be adjusting the volume, the pan, have a mute thing going on. We might have envelopes for a bunch of effects, controls, and stuff like that too, and it's really easy to kind of forget what's going on and what's not, especially if you're scrolling through a super long list looking for jackboxes. So show all active, um, what this does is it just changes this list to show the ones that are actually operating right now, which makes it easy. Hide all is a way of um, kind of cleaning up the timeline over here, because as we start doing envelopes, it creates separate lines for each one, and we want a quick way to be able to close all those out without turning them off, just hiding them. Arming all visible uh, just turns on any ones that are visible, and disarm all just basically bypasses everything we've done. This automation mode here, um, there are five different settings, and these are different ways that uh, Reaper's going to interpret the information we give it. We'll get to that in just a bit. And these are our track envelopes right now. We've got volume, which is obviously volume. We've got pan, which is the left-right mix of everything. We have width, which is just kind of how how much of the uh, the stereo width we want to utilize. That's not something I use too much. Um, then we have volume, pan, and width pre-effects. Um, the way these differ from the top ones is, uh, let's say we've got a bunch of effects going on on this track. Do we want to apply the volume change first and then let it uh, run through the effects um, by doing a pre-effects, or do we want to just have a the overall volume after all the effects have been applied or panned or with all that stuff. And mute, obviously, is just a way to quickly mute the track. So to start with, we're just going to work with volume. It's the one of the more obvious ways to show what this stuff does. And to turn it on, just click this little checkbox, bam. And now we can close this out. And as you can see, it's created what looks like a new track. It's really just kind of some data for this track, but it says volume. And it's got this line across here with kind of this ghost image of the sound file. And then you can probably see it at the very start there, there's that little dot. Um, that dot is a, a data point, and we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that right now, actually. So, um, at its heart, what we want to do with envelopes is to be able to control this volume for the uh, the entire project. And remember, we're in 
trim read mode right now, and uh, that's kind of an important thing. But first I'm going to show you how to manually place points on this thing, and then we'll get to what those different modes do. So let's say that when uh, this song starts out, the volume is at zero decibels here. Now zero doesn't mean that it's silent, it just means that, uh, you know, it's not any louder or quieter than it normally is. Okay, so let's say um, this first section here Okay, so this is the first section kind of in this point here. So what we want to do is let's say we want that to be a normal volume, but then when it gets to the second point here, we want it to get quieter. So what we can do is we can click here, we can zoom in, and we're going to create two data points. The reason we're going to create two is because we need an anchoring point. This anchoring point means that it stays this level up until here, and then the change is going to happen between these two points. So. I did that really quick, but as we zoom in, what we can do is um, we can hold shift and click to create a data point, or we can right click on the line and go to create new point. Now, if we want to get rid of a point, we can click on it, right click and go to delete point, or we can hold alt and click. So shift plus click inserts a point, alt plus click removes a point. And uh, with any point here, um, what we can do is we can click and hold on and drag it around to move it. Now, as you can see, as I move it, um, I've got that little window there with information right by my mouse that shows exactly how much uh, dB change we're doing, and it also shows which bar position and time position we're, uh, we're at right now, which is a nice little convenient thing. So let's say that uh, we want this guy to, right around here, go down to about three decibels quieter. Now, uh, we, if we want to be real sticklers, we can take this point and move it over so it does it really abruptly, and now let's listen to it. That's a little quieter, but let's let's make this super drastic so you can hear the difference. See how it did that? Pretty cool, huh? Now let's say that over here we want to have it jump uh, back up to the normal volume for this next cycle. So we're going to click and we're going to zoom in and uh, we're going to create two data points again, our anchor point so it stays there and then our secondary point where we're going to do the change. And if we want this to go back to normal volume we can either click and drag it back up to zero or if we double click on it, it'll automatically bring it back up to the zero middle range. That's a nice quick little way to do it. So now when we listen to it, it's going to be normal volume, drop down for about 12.7 decibels, and then up here go back to normal volume. And a cool little thing too to notice is that when we click around on here, over here, this little dB meter number thing, that's going to change to represent what it's at at the time that we're at. So like over here it shows that it's minus 12.7 because we're in this range here. Over here it shows zero. If we have another point here where it's, you know, 4.8, there, and it'll follow the curve too to kind of show you wherever we're at, that's what it is. So we're going to erase this point, erase that point. So now once again to listen to it, it's going to be normal volume, quiet, and the normal volume again. <laughs> just like magic. So um, a few things right off the bat that uh, we're going to do is uh, let's say we've uh, created this envelope here and we are done with it. We don't want to see it anymore. We can click this guy here, go to hide envelope and bam, it's still going to be in effect. We just don't have to have it cluttering up our timeline. And if we want to get it back, we can just click on the track here, go to the envelope button. And now we see that we do have a volume envelope in use. It is armed, which means it's working, but it's not visible. So we can turn visible back on and there it is. Now let's say that we've done a bunch of stuff with this, but we're not sure if we like it or not, and we want to just listen to it without the envelope, but without actually deleting all these points. We can go over here and we can click on this power button here. This bypasses it, which means that the data points are still here, but it's actually not in use. We're just ignoring it. And we can also do that by clicking on the button up here. So we can turn that off turn it on, arm it, disarm it, all that stuff. Now when we play it, it, uh, it does this thing. It runs through this envelope, it does our automation. We can make this as complicated with as many data points as we want. And just to show you the reason why I'm creating two points every time I do a change is I want it to have this kind of like square shape to it. If I only did one change, like let's say uh, at this part, I want it to go up to four decibels. If I just do one point and then move it up to, you know, four-ish decibels, then it does this gradual change. We don't want that. That's why we create that anchor point there 
now it stays the same. However, let's get rid of that for a minute, and I want to show you a couple other things here. Um, so with these points, what we can do is if we click on a point, it'll select that point, and that's the point we're going to be working with. So click on it, and if you right-click and go to Set Point Value, you can manually enter in everything you want. You can do the value, so zero decibels for here, the position in the timeline where it is. Um, I don't know what Bezier Tension is. I think it's something about the curve. Uh, let's see what that does. Yeah, that's uh, that's just how elongated of a curve it is. And if we set that, it automatically changes the shape to Bezier. But we have other shapes, like right now it's a linear shape, which is a straight line. Square shape means it just goes over and then jumps up. Um, that's another way to do it without doing an anchor point. We could do a slow start and end, where it kind of starts slow, does most of the work in the middle, and then does a slow end. A fast start, where it does most of it up front. Fast end, where it does most of it at the end. And Bezier, where you can kind of change this kind of slopey shape here. And as with most sliders, if we double click on the Bezier tension, it goes back to zero. We're just going to set this to linear. Now, uh, let's say we want to move one of these points. Just click it, drag it, move it. Let's say we want to move all the points. If we right click and go to select all points, what we can do is we can move these guys around. And as I do this, you might notice that there's points over here. And the reason these points are over here, let me just control Z a bit, is because it includes this first point. Um, technically, the envelope's the envelope, and when you create it, there's a point setting things to be neutral at the beginning. You can get rid of that if you want to by alt-clicking it, insert a new point or whatever. Um, you can also click on lines in here and drag them like that to kind of change the whole segment instead of having to, you know, if we want to change this part here, we don't have to move each of these dots up. We can just click this and move it where we want. Okay, so if we right-click, uh, select all points, we can also copy them, we can cut them, uh, delete them, invert them, which is an interesting little function. And uh, also through the menu here, we can uh, set our default point shape and uh, bypass and hide them, all that stuff. And clear and remove envelope is a big one too. Let's say we've done all this and we go, you know what, this is all crap, we don't want anything to do with it, we're done. Click here, go to clear envelope, it says, are you sure, because all points will be deleted? Yes, and it just brings it back to neutral. So let's open this guy back up again, because I want to show you one more thing with volume here. And this is specific to the trim read mode. Um, we'll get into more of that in a minute. But let's say that we've done all our funky volume stuff, and it's doing, you know, craziness all over the place. I don't want that to be quite so loud. But regardless, craziness everywhere. And we'll listen to this real quick. <laughs> Okay, you get the idea. It's doing all this stuff with the volume. Now, let's say that this is really good, but we decide we want this whole thing to be, you know, two decibels louder. Now, we could go into each of these points, including the first one, and manually increase them all by two decibels. That's a total waste of time. If this is set to trim read mode, what will happen is as we play the song, it'll read through all these points, but it'll also trim it based on what the top control is here. So instead of having to change all these, we can just right-click on this guy, change it to two decibels higher, or, you know, just slide it up to two decibels, something like that. And now it applies all these points, but it's augmenting it by two decibels. Let's make this really obvious by making it like four. So as we listen through it with the four decibels, it's still going to do the changes, it's just going to be louder. <laughs> as opposed to zero, where it's quieter. So that's trim read mode. And I guess we should get into the modes now. Um, so that's trim read. Uh, the next one is read, where all it's going to do is follow these points, but any volume control stuff is going to be ignored. In fact, it won't even let us change it, because whatever change in volume we do here is being overwritten by what the envelope is dictating. So right now, since the envelope dictates it's at zero, even if we click this and drag it up, ain't nothing going to happen, because this isn't the boss, this is the boss. So, and you can see it move in relation to that. So that's read mode. Um, like I said, trim read uh, follows this, but it will still apply the blanket volume changes up here, or pan or whatever it is we're working with. Um, and then we've got uh, the three other modes, touch, latch, and write. And we're gonna start with write to show you what this is. And what we're gonna do is we're going to Right click over here, select all points, right click, delete all points. Where are you? There we go. So 
We've got a blank envelope here, but it's set to write mode. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set it back here. I'm going to click play, but then while it's playing, I'm going to click on this and manually change it. And what that's going to do is by doing that, it's going to create these points. So we're going to click play by hitting space, and then I'm going to move this around. So you see, each time I move the slider at all, it did all this stuff to it. And that's a way to have complete control over it. The only thing is if we play it again right now while it's still in um, right mode, it'll change over those. And it looks like it sets it back automatically to trim read to prevent this, which is nice. But um, if you set it to write mode again, or if it stays in write mode, and then if we just play it back to listen to it and forget it's in write mode, it'll undo all of these because it'll just, you know, crush through them. And the reason it does that is because it still thinks it's writing my input on this fader here. And even though I'm not doing anything, it's creating this zero point for it. So when you do it in write mode, it looks like it automatically sets it back to trim read, which is really cool. Um, so that's one way to do it. Now let's, uh, let's set it to write mode. We'll do another thing real quick, and then I'll show you what the other modes do. And to quickly get it back to zero during this, I'm just double clicking here to bring it to zero. So we did write mode. Now let's take a look at what we can do with latch mode. Um, latch mode is kind of cool in that it acts as read mode, where it'll just go through these and read them without doing anything. You can see it's not overwriting them like write mode is. Um, but as soon as I click this guy and start moving around, then it turns into write mode. So if I want to listen through this part without changing anything, but then in this part do some stuff, all I have to do is wait till here, then click this, move it around, and then let go like this. So once you click it, it does... Uh, it does start changing stuff like in here. When you let go, it doesn't go back to write mode. It stay or back to read mode. It stays in write mode. So you can listen through part and then do your changes and then stop it. Um, it'll stay in latch mode at that point too. The uh, the other option is touch mode, and for this we're just going to select all these and then delete them with the delete key. What touch mode does is it, it kind of puts some tension on this. So it'll play through and it uh, won't do anything until you move it. And then when you let go of it, it'll bring it back like this. So we're going to play and then move this around. So it plays it reading what it is, but then when you click it, it'll change accordingly, and then when you let go, it'll go back to the envelope. Like you can see, as I'm moving it, it's creating all these data points, but then when I let go, it just quickly does this thing right back there. So those are all of our modes. Um, trim read will read the data points, but still let you do the fader um, to change it blanket. Read will just read the data points, not let you change anything in the fader. Touch lets you uh, change it just when you click on it. Latch lets you play through it and then change it once you start clicking on it. And then right just crushes through everything and uh, creates new points. So that's um, a nutshell how do you do all those. The pre-effects versus the original ones we talked about. We also talked about how we can go in here and manually create points if we want to, in addition to doing it in play mode where we do it in real time. Um, I tend to do all of mine manually because I'm a total power freak, control freak nut job, and I like to be able to do things very precisely and accurately. And I feel like if I'm doing this stuff, moving it around in real time, I just feel like I'm going to mess something up and it's not the way I want. So we've just been looking at volume at this point. So let's select all this and delete it. And in fact, let's turn off the volume one. We're going to just turn it off. And there we go. Now, uh, if we open this guy, we're going to change it back to trim read. We're going to turn on our pan envelope. And what this does is this controls the left, right stereo mix. It's the same process. I just want to show you really quickly what it can do. So let's say we create a point here. And we create a point here. And then we create a point here and a point here and bring that all the way up. Now, as we listen to it, what's going to happen is it's going to go from the center all the way to the right, all the way to the left and back to center like this. Mm -hmm. 
So that is what pan is, um, just to lock it in there. Another cool thing um, that we can do is we can do envelopes for almost, I don't want to say almost every effect, but a lot of different effects. So let's let's turn this off. And let's say that we click the effects button and we go and we want to add some effect like uh, like our flanger here. The flanger is a real noticeable one. So we double click it, put it in here, and let's just set it up so, what does it sound like right now? Cool. Now what we're going to be looking at is this mix control. And as we move this just on our own, it changes how flangey it is. So at the very end, there's no flange. And then up at the top, there's super flange. And we're going to set it to zero for now, or roughly zero one-to-one -one ratio. We're going to close this out, and then now that this has an effect on it, when we open our envelope button here, it shows all these different variables for the flanger as well. Now, this isn't too bad. There's probably like, I don't know, 10 or 11 or so controls here for the flanger, but some effects like hardcore synths or really intense EQs or something have like, you know, stacks and stacks of them. So if we want to just control that mix thing we were doing, we can either find it in the list or we can click this button here that says show last touch FX parameters only. What that does is that limits the list for each effect to the last control knob we physically touched in that thing, which was the mix. So that's a nice little thing to know about. We're going to click this mix. And now what we're going to do is uh, right off the bat, before creating any points, we're just going to bring this down to zero. So when this plays through, even though the effect is on, it's effectively, haha, effectively bypassing it. What we're going to do is we're going to create a point here at the start. And then go until about the middle here and create another point. We're going to bring this guy all the way up. Now what's going to happen is, uh, let's do it a bit sooner so it's a bit more obvious. As this plays, we're going to look at the effect, and uh, it's going to show this control changing here. So let's go over here and play it. And watch this knob right here, the mix. Pretty cool, huh? And when we stop, it goes back to zero. And as we move this around, it'll show where it is at every point. Now, we're going to right-click at this point, just to have some fun, uh, set point shape, and we're going to do it to fast end. So now most of the work is done there, and let's listen again. Pretty cool, huh? So basically this is just all to say that we can, we can use envelopes to control aspects of effects. Now with a flanger or something like that, um, no big deal, um, but let's open up our effects here. Let's delete this flanger, which will remove all the associated effects. And let's add something like a delay. Now what a delay is, is it's a repeating echo. Um, kind of like uh, what you'd hear in a canyon where you say echo, and it goes echo, echo, echo. And uh, we're going to set the mix pretty high right now. The mix, of course, is just the amount of the effect we hear versus the amount of the original line. And we're just going to listen to this, how it is. So all this is to say is that this effect has a trailing kind of sound to it, where even whenever the original sound plays, this kicks in and then it's playing sound on top of it over the rest of this. Now the reason I mention this is let's say that we want to do a mix effect on the delay. And let's go in here to our envelopes. We'll click on the mix guy there. And let's say we don't want to have a whole lot of mix for most of it, but then at this point right here, we want to have it shoot really high up. So we're going to create two points. And then where it drops off, we want to create two points and then bring it down. Now, let's listen through this and kind of show you exactly what's happening here. And in fact, we want that window open because it will help demonstrate the point. Let's start from the beginning so we can actually hear what's going on. Now you might have noticed the uh, the delay gets really intense right here and then drops off instantly to nothing. Now that might be what you're looking for, but what you might be trying to do is have it so all this stuff really has just a slight echo, but then when it plays this stuff, it has a really intense echo, an echo that carries over even though the rest of it goes back to having a small echo. So that's not really the way to do it with um, with this sort of envelope here because 
all it's doing is it's controlling the mix, and once it gets back here, it's turning it right back down, and that includes whatever carryover um, delay there is from this earlier part. So there is a way to do it properly, and um, I will very quickly give you a rundown of what that is, but basically what that involves is having a separate track that this one is routed to, and we're going to get into routing in uh, a later lesson and then doing an envelope on how much of the effect is sent through that new routed track. So that's the basics of, uh, of envelopes and automation. Obviously, you can have as many of these going as you want. You know, we could do, we could have our pan and volume, our mute, everything going on at the same time, and have a whole bunch of stuff. And this is where we get into the realm of wanting to be able to do that show all active and hide all active stuff, because that looks much better than you know, having all these guys open. So once again, I'm Viking Guitar. Thank you for watching this lesson. I hope it's explained some stuff on automation. This is one of the things I really recommend. Just create some dummy file, just record something, and just go to town playing with these. Change all of your effects parameters, like, you know, toss a toss an EQ on there, and then take a look at what effects you, or um, what parameters you have. You can change everything in the Reaper EQ here. Just go to town, play with it a lot. That's how you're going to learn how to do this stuff better. And uh, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about routing, which is going to be super, super fun, because uh, that's where stuff starts to really, really get interesting. And uh, after that, of course, we're going to go into MIDI instruments and all sorts of other stuff. So in the meantime, I'm Viking Guitar. Thank you for attending Viking Guitar University. Be sure to go to www.vikingguitaruniversity.com for more online tutorials. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, keep the world metal.